Okay, this is section 1.5, and it's on graphs of other types of function relations. And uh, you get into a little bit different type of graphs here. They're graphs of uh, absolute value equations and radical equations. And we might also do some sideways parabolas and, you know, circles. And I think it's something that you might really appreciate learning. I don't know if that was sarcastic or not, but um, let's go ahead and see if how this section goes. First uh, material here is on graphing absolute value equations. So let's graph this function, f of x equals the absolute value of x minus 2 plus 5. We could uh, plot some points on this. Let's put in some values like negative 1 through 5 in for x and see what we get. We put negative 1 in for x, negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. Absolute value of that makes a number positive, so that's 3. 3 plus 5 is 8. Put 0 in, 0 minus 2 is minus 2, absolute value of negative 2 is 2. I feel like I'm an auctioneer here. 2 plus 5 is 7. Let's do another one, put 1 in. 1 minus 2 is negative 1, absolute value of negative 1 is 1. 1 plus 5 is 6, you get the idea. Just keep on plugging them in here. What you see is that they go down and come back up again. And the graph that you end up getting is a V-shaped graph. And I'll tell you what, let's go ahead, you could plot these by hand if you wanted to. And, uh, we could graph these actually on the Excel sheet called uh, absolute value. So here's the Excel sheet called absolute value, and it'll solve little absolute value equations here. But uh, over here, it will actually graph absolute value equations and clear up to a quadratic being inside the absolute value. Now, we have to have a leading coefficient of something. So if you don't see a leading coefficient, the assumed leading coefficient is 1. And on this actual equation that we're dealing with, let me... Uh, minimize this here a little bit and something just beeped on my computer but here the a is one okay the number in front of the whole absolute value would be one we have one of these absolute values the b the bx squared there is no x squared so that'd be zero the number in front of the x let's scroll on over here the number in front of the x the c would be uh, one okay let's open this up a little bit more so you can see what's going on here Give me just one second, okay? Ah, okay, let's see if we can get this. There we go. Now maybe we can see everything that's going on here. Okay, so the C is 1, the D is minus 2, the E is the number beside the X outside of the absolute value, which there is none, so that'd be 0, and then the F over here is a constant. So that'd be 5. And so we have everything. Let's go ahead and take a look at this graph. And uh, so you get this V-shaped graph going on right here. And you could change the uh, start and end location if you wanted to down here. If you want to see it from a certain region to a certain region, you can just change that value right here. The vertex point on this, I don't know if it calculates the vertex point, but you can see that the vertex is somewhere between, well, around right here. It's 5 units high. And how many units to the right? Well, it's actually two units to the right. And you can find the vertex point of an absolute value equation that's in this form by taking the opposite of this value. Actually, what you do is set the, uh, the expression that's inside the absolute value symbols, set that equal to 0. So if you set x minus 2 equal to 0, you get x equals 2. So 2 is the x part of the vertex point. And this is the y part of the vertex point. So the vertex point is at 2, 5. And since it's positive, it opens up. So absolute value equations give you point, pointy objects. And this particular one looks like a V. And it has a vertex point of 2, 5. And since it's positive, it opens up. So it's different than a uh, different from a parabola. You can see the, the point right there. So um, so it's something, you know, that's it's, uh, very different. So um, let's see what we got here. And there's a graph of that thing. And here's how we put it in on Excel, as we just explained. And this is the vertex point that we're talking about. So uh, if you have something in this format, x plus h squared plus k. Remember back when we were dealing with parabolas, the vertex point was at negative hk. And same thing here. If you have x plus h and the absolute value plus k, the vertex point is at negative hk. Opens upward if it's... Um, positive and opens downward if it's negative. The larger this A value is, the skinnier it gets. Let's graph this one. 
there we go, negative 3 times the quantity x plus 4 minus 2. Well, first of all, it's going to open downward because this is negative. It's going to be pointy, v-shaped, upside down v-shaped because it's an absolute value equation. And the vertex point is going to be at negative 4, negative 2. And you can see that right here. Tell you what, let's go ahead and put that in on Excel. So let me shrink this down here a little bit. So the A would be one, uh, negative 3, actually, in this case. The B would be 0, because there is no, nothing squared on this problem. The A would be 1. Sorry, the C would be 1. That's the number in front of the X. The D would be 4. The E is any term with an X outside of the absolute value, and there isn't any. And then finally, the constant is negative 2. So let's put that in there. Negative 2. And there's the graph of this thing. And you can see it farther out. But where's the vertex point? Well, it's, I think, what about 4 over to the left, negative 4. And how far down is it? Well, I probably graphed it too far. Let's narrow in on that vertex point. Let's graph it from like negative 5 to 0. So negative 5 to 0. Now we can see this section really good. So it's at negative 4 on the x. And where is it on the y? negative 2. So negative 4, negative 2, I believe that's what we said it was going to be at, negative 4, negative 2. Okay, um, let's do this one. Graph this absolute value uh, expression here, or equation, or function, really. They are functions. They only uh, have one y value for each x. Let's graph this one. Let's see if I can get this on the screen here. So, uh, well, let's just take a look. First of all, it's going to open upward. It's going to be v-shaped because it's a, uh, a absolute value function. V-shaped, open upward because it's positive. It's going to be a little thinner than usual. I know the y part of the vertex is negative 4, but where is the x part of the vertex point? Well, let's let's take a look at it here a second. This one's pretty tough. So um, tell you what, let's uh, shrink this down here a little bit so we can type this in. The a would be 5. The b, well, there's no squared term on here, so the b would be 0. The C would be minus 3, or negative 3. The D would be the constant, which is 4. The E would be 0 because there's no X term. And then finally, a negative 7 is a constant at the end. And let's take a look at this graph and see what it looks like. And, well, I can't see the vertex point in this area because I still have it set to see the graph from negative 5 to 0. So let's go from, oh, how about negative 5 to to 5 and see if we can see where it curves around here. So here's the vertex point. Now how far over is it to the right? I'm not sure how far over it is. Let's zoom up on this area. Let's look somewhere between 0 and 2 on this graph. So let's look from 0 to 2 to see where the vertex point is. And now I can see that the vertex point in terms of a height seems to be down 7. Okay, so there's your minus 7. How far over to the right is it? Well, it looks somewhere halfway between 1 and 1.5, so maybe 1 and a fourth. Well, the way you can find that vertex point is, here's the y part of the vertex point, negative 7. To find the x part of the vertex point, just set the quantity that's inside the absolute value equal to 0. So if we set negative 3x plus 4 equals 0, we take the 4 to the other side, get negative 3x equals negative 4, then divide through by negative 3, and you get 4 thirds. Well, 4 thirds is actually 1 and a third. So I was off when I said 1.25. It's actually 1.33. So that's where the ver vertex point is, 4 thirds or 1.33 comma negative 7. And you could always zoom up on it more to, to see it. Like it's somewhere between 1 and 1.5, right? So 1 and 1.5. And let's see what it looks like here now. So now we know, well... I don't think you could still tell, so you pretty much need to figure that out, you know, how to uh, get that, uh, remember how to get the x part of the vertex point by setting this quantity in here equal to zero. And there's the graph.